If you saw my series with Webflow hometown homepages, then you probably noticed that along with making over six homepages, I also gave five of the logos a little bit of a facelift. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I did that super fast with Illustrator. So if you're working with a client who has a logo that's a bit outdated, but they don't wanna take the time to do an entire brand overhaul, you can still offer a huge improvement. I'm also gonna address a very common yet very annoying problem for design when clients hand over their logo in JPEG format. No! No! You can't edit the colors, resize it, even remove the background. So if that happens to you a lot, then don't worry, I'm gonna show you how I handle this. But before we dive in, I wanna quickly mention that I've recently put up two of my online classes up on my own website. So if you ever wanted to watch them, but you didn't want to subscribe to Skillshare and pay a monthly fee, then you can now do that just by purchasing them off of my website. I'll leave the links for those down below so that you can check them out. And without further ado, let's get into these logos. So for this first one, this was a scenario where everywhere online that they had this logo, it was this JPEG image that is just kind of impossible to use. It has this background that's not even white. It's kind of like this off-white rectangle. And so basically I needed to just totally recreate this so that I could make it white and that way it would stand out on the background of the web page that I was designing. So the first step is just picking fonts that match. So I'll just write out exactly what the words are that appear in the logo. And this way it's so much easier to kind of toggle through fonts and find exactly what fits the best. So in this case, what I used was minion variable concept. So as you can see, that is either dead on or pretty close. And for this, I used Termina. I think I did this weight. Yeah. So here are our fonts looking pretty good. And now we need to kind of recreate these shapes. So all I'm going to do is create a circle and match it up as much as I can with this outside line. And then we'll switch it so that we have a stroke instead. And I am going to make the stroke just as big as I think we need. Four pixels seems good. Then I'm going to come in with my pen tool and add anchor points where we need them. And this way I can go in and delete the anchor points that we don't need and we have a little semicircle. I'll just copy that and kind of fit it nicely for this smaller one. Then I'm going to come in with my pen tool again and just trace this little flame. Then I'm just gonna create this line. And now we kind of have all of the building blocks for this logo. So I'm just going to bring that over here and we can definitely touch up this flame a little bit. I'm gonna go in and really just touch it up so that it looks nice. One way to do that is using the smooth tool. So just select and then kind of just go along the edges wherever it could be smoother here. Okay, I think that's a pretty good flame. Now, I think it would look better if this line actually kind of fed into this flame. So instead of these, I'm actually going to use rectangles with no stroke. And I'm just going to move this a bit. Just so that we can have that nice continuation. There, I think that already looks a lot better. So now, since this is one shape, I'm just going to use the Pathfinder to unite it. Okay, looking good. So now let's just make sure that we have a good placement for the text. And next we're going to need to make this curved. 
So in order to do that, I'm actually going to use type on a path. So I am going to recreate this circle here and I'm going to make it so that the size would fit nicely inside this. Then I'm going to go to type on a path, Pacino, and we want to sample that exact font. Then let's make sure that we have it centered. And it looks like it's not quite on the right path. So I think we want to make the circle a bit smaller but make the text a bit bigger. Scooch it around a bit. I actually feel like semi-bold works a bit better here. And maybe there could be less room in between the letters. Let's go with 150. There you go. And there we have it. We've really just recreated this logo, but now it is so much easier to use. We could make it all white so that we can put it on a background. And there you go, that took me about 10 minutes. So you could absolutely do this and even get a little bit more granular with it if you wanted to um, for any client that you are working with. Okay, next is in T. So for this, the idea was less about recreating this exactly and more about updating it and making it fit the vibe a little bit better. So for this specifically, this logo is really sharp and the colors, um, specifically this green, is very bright and kind of neon and in your face. Whereas this tea shop that I actually walked into is really kind of nice and cozy and warm. You know, tea is, is warm. It's not like a stark thing. So I really wanted the logo to kind of um, just lend itself to that vibe better, be much softer and more natural. So that's the idea here. So after looking at a bunch of fonts, what I decided was that Modesto would be a really good one. So I'm just going to show you what this looks like. As you can see, it is definitely still substantial like this one is. It has some harsh angles, but it also has some rounded elements to it. And I think overall, it's just a lot more kind of comfortable to look at. I did want to sort of maintain the integrity of the original logo, so I wanted to recreate this little stem, um, but in a much more soft profile. So here is what I have, and then it was just about fitting it in nicely um, with this logo. So as I was kind of moving it around, I decided it might look cool if it was kind of growing out of the N. So what I did was I copied, you know, the logo over here so that I would always have this font and I did command shift O to create outlines. So now these are shapes as opposed to editable text. And yeah, from there, it's just about kind of finessing it so that it looks nice. So just going to move it down a bit. I'm going to take the eraser and get rid of the bottom. And then going to ungroup all these so that we have just the N and this, and we will unite that. And then same thing, just kind of coming down and smoothing this out will make a big difference. So first we'll just do this, then I'll just keep going over it with this smooth tool until I'm happy with it. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. And then I'm just going to do some manual tracking here or kerning, I actually don't remember which one it is. <laughs> and kind of want these letters to be a bit closer together, but we do want to keep in and T kind of separated. And this is really just about sort of visual balance and visual weight. Um, and I think that is pretty good. So there we go, another little transformation. 
Okay, next was this flower shop logo and I just felt like this text really wasn't readable. Um, you know, you could kind of read what it said, but it kind of takes a minute. When it's a logo, you want to be able to look at it right away and know what it says. Um, but I did want to keep sort of the overall vibe of this. So I ended up going with the font black bike for this. So you can see here that, you know, it's definitely not the same font, but it has some similar energy to it and it's just a little bit more updated and cool. So now for this font, I ended up choosing Attila Sands. And I think we can track this out a little bit. Here we go. And then I felt like it fit really nicely kind of under there. And there you go, super easy one to transform. So for Old Crow Antiques, one thing that I didn't love about this logo is that it says crows twice, you know, there's crows written out and there's two crows on it, but it never says antiques. So when you first glance at this logo, you don't even know what it's for. So I knew that I definitely wanted to add antiques or antique shop um, to the logo type. Um, and I also just didn't really think that the heart did much personally. I wanted to keep this very typographic. So I chose a font called Holtzman. And then for antiques, I did source serif variable. Then I got rid of some of the spacing in here just by selecting that space and then going like this. I think 120 was pretty good. And then once I had that, again, I just grabbed a copy of it and created outlines so that I could just manipulate it a little bit. And what I ended up doing is giving it a bit of a shadow. I wanted to keep it subtle, so just a few pixels um, was good. And then I'm just going to group this together and I'm going up to Effect Warp Arc. And I think that it's nice to keep the arc really subtle. So I ended up doing just like 16%. In order to center text, see how there's a space after the S here? So it can be tricky to um, center it when it's as text. So I'm gonna do the same thing, keep a copy over here and create outlines. And then I can select these both and center them. Thought it was looking pretty good but I wanted to add something kind of on either side. And so I ended up just doing little tiny circles on either side. I feel like that kind of helps with the vintage feel of it. And there you go, here's what it looked like. And I feel like it looked even better on the website when it comes in with all of the other colors. Last was the chocolate therapist. And I think this text definitely verges on hard to read. So I also kind of wanted to get rid of the RX idea. Um, though I think it's cute, I just wanted to do something a little different. So I knew I wanted to use the font Palm Canyon Drive. I wanted chocolate to be sort of the main event of this logo, just kind of centering it in this little window, which ended up working perfectly. I think it looks super cute in there. And then for therapist, I just used the font Soleil and made it a bit smaller so that it is secondary. For this one, I also kind of wanted um, something on either side here, but I decided to do like little sparkles, which I think was cute. So we do the star tool, we click and instead of five, we do four and there you go. Got a little star and just zoom way in and position these where we want them. There we go. And here is what it looked like on the real site. If you like this video, you might also enjoy some of my other logo design videos, like this one where I redesigned some wellness logos in a little design challenge. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any new videos. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!